right, howdy folks, how are we doing? Now you'll remember me and Mucker went to Agritechnica just at the end of last year and uh, we had a look at the Merlot stand and had a look at specifically their multi-farmer but also um, which we're going to have a look at later in the year um, but first of all we're going to have a look at their 42.7 which is here uh, turbo farmer it's a 4.2 ton machine 7 meter reach um, now we are in the market for um, for a change our loader is sort of well over 6,000 hours now and is due for I say due for change and due for a bit of an upgrade because we're we're a three ton machine we want to move up to the four ton so uh, we've got this Merlot from Browns uh, to see what it's like first of all let's have a look under the bonnet see what we've got well first things first you notice that it's very well laid out servicing wise you've got your air filter there you've got your filters there there's your coolant level this is all your after treatment exhaust here and everything uh, like I said it's a Deutsch motor 140 horsepower uh, it's 150 litre uh, a minute hydraulic capacity on it oil flow there's your fan out there you've got your uh, your fans and your intercooler and everything and your radiator all mounted horizontally which is bit more unusual but they made good use of the available space they've got to pack it all in and there's room to get around it room to service it yeah they've, they've thought about that they've thought about that a lot reversible fan on it uh so that's pretty good pretty simple under there nice one piece bonnet like so standard mirror package with a wide angle and a normal mirror First things I, I do notice about the machine actually is it's quite compact. It's not, it's a bit taller and a bit shorter rather than sort of you know a lot of machines of this type are a bit uh, sort of shorter, but they're longer. So it's quite a comp. It's for it's for a four ton machine, but quite compact dimensions. And it's quite nicely finished. You've got your pickup hitch on the back. You got your um, your valves for your pick up itch you got the new trailer braking system there you got the old school uh trailer brakes there you got your seven pin plug uh you got your mirror for your pickup this, there is also option on this for a camera so you can see your pickup and backwards there's your oil uh your hydraulic tank level there now quite interestingly on this so i'm keen to see how good it is this contraption here is part of the cab suspension system uh, if I look, look down there it's on the deck at the minute because it's switched off um, when I switch it on that plunge will move up and it gives it basically six inches of travel so it should make well everyone says it makes a hell of a difference so we will see I'm keen to see how uh, how much of a difference it makes but you know it looks well put together Right, it's shot on 460 Michelins at the minute, they're on the, uh, the XMCL tyres. Pretty good tyres. It's actually come with a, uh, with a, uh, an X4, well it's a Cherry Products muck grab with the, the heavy duty tines on it, the welded on tines, and a bucket and the, and the pallet tines obviously. Uh, it's got the Merlot headstock. Um, and it's got Merlot's um, hydraulic coupling system, which are a, uh, a screw-on system rather than the sort of the quick fit. But that's what Merlot use. Interestingly, um, there's no pressure relief dump on this because it doesn't need one. As soon as you let go of the joystick and you're not doing an operation with it, there's no pressure in the system. Um, and to get around that on the on the look at the attachments and that, you've got check valve in it. So that the you know, the grab won't creep when you when you let go of the of the of the rock, rocker switch, it will stay where it is. But you can just look. See, I've not took the pressure off. There's no pressure on it. You can just undo them, do them back up, just hand tight. Um, and that's a blooming good idea, I think. 
good idea. So yeah, there's never any pressure in the system, only when you know, you're doing an operation with it. You've got your tow hitch there if you need it, um, and you've got your, your battery isolator there. So there you go, it's pretty simple really. There's the front half of the, uh, the cab suspension bit there. You've got a curved screen. There you go. This machine runs on Ablu, so you've got your Ablu there. And that'll be your diesel. Simple as. Right, so there you go. Let's quick walk around. We'll have a quick go in it. Um, but there'll be a two, you know, two or three more videos of doing various jobs with it. So uh, I'm going to do uh, start loading the feeder wagon up and see how we get on with that. So let's crack on. Right. Not too bad to climb up into the cab. It is quite high up. And the door isn't massive, but access is all right on it. Right, first things first. Key, put on brake. There we go, we're fired up. Oh, it's a nice layout in here. Um, not the biggest cab in the world, but it is, you know, it's comfy enough. It's all laid out nicely. Seems nicely, uh, nicely fitted as well. Right, so first thing is, this is a hydrostatic machine, so uh, when you put your foot on the pedal, it will move. You don't, uh, the pedal doesn't control the, 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 the engine speed, so to speak. It controls forward speed, and the engine, um, revs up and down as it needs to so uh, it's more the travel pedal rather than an accelerator pedal all right so you've got your joystick uh, it's got a dead man switch around the front there where you can see so you need to press that otherwise nothing happens like that you see press the thing and then all back the bill will go up you got your that rocker switch there is your beam in and out that one there does your grab You've got your parking brake there, so that's on and off. And that's the switch that changes it from your auxiliary at the front to your pickup hitch. That um, is quite a good little switch on a hydrostatic machine because what this will do when it's on auto like that, when I boom up, you'll hear the revs will pick up a bit. Now you set that on this little dial here it's set about halfway at the minute so that'll um, then rev up to halfway when you do a, a movement with it because like I say when you're on the pedal it doesn't necessarily control the engine speed of the machine so um, it's sort of a it's to enable quicker cycle times when you pull up at a, up a, a trailer or whatever you can then not use the engine pedal which is down there the machine will do it for you just so it makes it easier to drive um, if you stick it into that mode then that becomes like a hand throttle then for operating a brush or that sort of thing so I'm we'll stick it back into auto uh, there's your steering modes you got your loading chart there but also on the main computer here you'll see you've got an active load chart as well this is also got a onboard wire as well so at the minute we're 16 percent loaded at the front from tipping over um that's your load chart there so if i boom out you'll see that little green dot will move further out if i go up it'll go up you see so it just it's a it's a it's a live demonstration of where your sort of your, your center of load is if you know what i mean that all that's your weighing system there See now we've gone up to 25% on the on the tip over there, and that gives you the yeah, um, uh, how far off the ground you are, and you've got your angle there. So uh, looks complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. Pretty simple. It's got two speeds, two speed ranges in the hydrostatic. So you've got a, a yard speed, which is 0 to 20k, and you've got the road speed, which is 0 to 40k. There's your, your heat and your conditioning. Um, you've also got the uh, your forward and reverser on the 
on the steering column here, like a lot of people like that, like Mako, he likes that for some reason. Um, that's about it really. You've got that big green dial there, that does control your, your dash. So that's about it really, let's, uh, let's have a go in it. thing to get used to or well, the first thing that's tricky to get used to when going from a power shift to hydrostatic is the style of driving it's a different style of driving so you've got to get the used to that first but the thing with hydrostat is it does give a lovely you know, it's just so smooth you don't need to use a brake machine does it all for you. switch the little trigger around the front there that's got will take a little bit of used to because it's sort of you've got to just hold your hand there all the time it's uh I, mean, I know they have to have these things now for health and safety and all that but it is a pain take a load of straw visibility on it that is the bonus of being up high you can you know you can see every corner of the machine a little bit of a struggle to the back corner I can just see the back corner the exhaust is there but it is visible just but above that you've got a view you've got a good view from it It's quite high and it's quite a narrow door. It's still it is still easy to get in and out. I've not had a problem so far. Oh, uh, forwards. I say it's a new machine. Controls are different. You still have to just have a little think about what you're doing for uh, before you do it. It's not just. Um, just get on and just drive, is it nice? Uh, yeah, because it's different. It is, 
it's I've drunk to very precise on it. Very precise. Clamp me all up. And up you go. Uh plug it break off. In the forward. speed in the boom and the cycle times. Oh, well, there you go. The first impressions are good. Uh, I quite like it. Seems nice and responsible. Uh, nice and responsive. Maneuverable. Good visibility on it. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I shall put it to a few more tests and uh, they'll come up in the next few videos. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed that little video and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Ta-ta!